Cupid's Court or Collaborative Canvas? Why winning arguments hurts your love life? In the intricate dance of love, many of us unwittingly carry the baggage of a mistaken belief, a belief deeply rooted in the realms of law courts and the structured traditions of school debating. It is the belief that in any argument, the one who is right or possesses the stronger case should emerge as the legitimate winner. However, this premise fundamentally misunderstands the true essence of relationships. The goal is not to defeat an opponent, for there are no prizes in love for such victories, only the hollow echo of self-satisfied loneliness. Instead, the true purpose is to aid each other in evolving into the best versions of ourselves. Picture a scenario where a partner, armed with a correct insight into the flaws of their significant other, launches an argument with a stern, masterful, and almost gleeful tone. They might assert, you've been drinking too much, or you hogged the conversation at the party. The insight is not inaccurate, which makes navigating this delicate territory all the more challenging. The critic is right, yet unable to win because love offers no rewards for accurately pinpointing the flaws of our partners. Paradoxically, by attacking with clinical precision, we diminish our chances of achieving the ultimate goal, the evolution of the person we share our life with. When confronted with a piercing insight into our shortcomings, our instinctive response is not to deny the accusation itself, as we are painfully aware of our flaws, but to resist the surrounding atmosphere. The fear lies not in the validity of the accusations but in the harshness of their delivery. The blinding light of truth terrifies us, for we dread that acknowledgement of our failings would lead to crushing condemnation, rendering us worthless. The prospect of embarking on a strenuous, miserable journey of self-change without empathy seems unbearable. Until we reform ourselves, we fear we would have no claim on the affections or forgiveness of our partner. This fear compels us to deny everything, vehemently asserting that we do exercise enough, work diligently, and never waste time on embarrassing websites. Burdened with shame and guilt, we find a lover's further upbraiding impossible to endure. The defensive argument, ironically, becomes the obstacle preventing us from reaching the truth. The pursuit of truth, when overly confrontational, erects barriers that obscure the path to genuine understanding. In the philosophy of lying, Plato introduces the concept of the just lie, a lie deemed acceptable when our life is in danger. While our partners may not be searching for an axe when they pose inquisitorial questions, psychologically, we may perceive them as potential threats. Consequently, responding with a simple I don't know becomes somewhat understandable. It might seem unfair to ask the accuser to shoulder responsibility for our vulnerability, but for the sake of the relationship, they must affirm that they won't wield the acknowledged truth as a weapon. What adds a touch of melancholy to this situation is the realization that, under more sympathetic circumstances, we, as the accused, might willingly confess to everything. There is an innate desire to unburden ourselves and admit to our brokenness. The solution lies in creating an environment where both partners acknowledge their flaws but are never deemed beyond the need for love and kindness. A space where the mutual commitment to evolution is a given, and each well-considered criticism is accepted as correct but wrapped in layers of extraordinary reassurance. Recognition is key. People don't change merely by being told what's wrong with them, they change when they feel sufficiently supported to undertake the change they already know is due. In relationships, it is not enough to be occasionally right. We must be generous enough in our love to enable our partner to admit when they are in the wrong. Love, much like any other skill, is something we can learn. This calm and charming guide through the key issues of relationships assures us that success in love need not be a matter of luck. It beckons us to embrace a transformative approach, transcending the idea of winning arguments to catalyze growth within the very fabric of our connections. Hi, I am Sarah.